All right, good morning. Thank you for joining me for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Today is Saturday, the 13th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the Book of Mormon. There were many among them who began to be proud and began to contend warmly with their adversaries. Yea, it was the cause of much trial with the church, for the hearts of many were hardened and their names were blotted out, that they were remembered no more among the people of God. Alma chapter 1 verses 22 through 24. A hard lesson for us to learn is that whenever we engage in argument or debate about sacred things, we are wrong. Even if our message is right and true, we are wrong. Persuasion and conversion to the truth come only through the quiet whisperings of the Holy Ghost, not through intellectual jangling or over much logic, it is possible for a faithful member of the church to become essentially anti-anti in their response to others who oppose our faith. In the process, the church member forfeits the right to the gift of the Holy Ghost and places himself in spiritual peril. The risen Lord taught the Nephites that he had he that hath the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention, and he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger one with another. We do not debate, we teach, and we testify. Okay. And today is Alma chapter 28. As teeny tiny it's only 14 verses and I didn't I didn't come up with an obedience verse because it talks about wars and contentions and then um, and then a lot of bloodshed and it's kind of wrapping up it says um, this was an account of Ammon and his teachings and Alma and his teachings and now we're getting into the war chapters that's basically what this is it's a, a segue almost so I didn't come up with a obedience verse I even listened to the chapter twice and I still didn't come up with one which is a-okay all right commentary short as well um let's see okay truly mourn yet they rejoice and ex exult in their hope <coughs> goodness me the great call of diligence of men to labor in the vineyard of the lord Sorrow because of death and destruction among men, and joy because of their light, because of the light of Christ unto life. Consider the devoted labors and heartfelt concern of Mormon. Under the inspiration of God, he scours the records of the people and extracts the wisdom and truth that will recapture the essence of God's message to future readers. He observes with sorrow the sufferings of both the wicked and the innocent. He notes the transcendent joy of those who experience the mighty change of heart and come unto Christ. He wants his readers to learn the lessons of faith, repentance, obedience, humility, and a willingness to press forward in the strength of the Lord. Mormon writes, at a time when the Nephite nation is in the throes of extinction, although his heart must be filled with anguish over the fate of his own people, he nevertheless bears solemn witness to us, his readers of the latter days, that iniquity leads to misery and destruction, and that righteous leads to happiness. And thus we see the great call of diligence of men to labor in the vineyard of the Lord, and thus we see the great reason for sorrow and also of rejoicing, sorrow because of death and destruction among men, and joy because of the light of Christ unto life. Are we ready to accept Mormon's message and conduct our lives in accordance with the truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Uh, 
I have, I don't, nothing extra to say about that. Sums it up pretty well. Okay. Day 195, Truman G. Madsen, about doubts and prayer. It is said I don't pray because I have doubts. I doubt things about myself, about the gospel, and even about God. It is truly said that doubt and faith do not coexist in the same person at the same time, but they can exist within a second of each other. Witness Heber C. Kimball standing by the door while Brigham Young was laying on what appeared to be his deathbed. Said Heber, I doubt very much if Brigham ever rises from that bed. However, he had no sooner uttered the words than he spoke up as with another voice and said, He shall live and shall start upon this mission with me tomorrow morning. And they did start the very next morning on their mission to England. He was right the second time, from doubt to faith. On another occasion, he stood in the Bowery in Salt Lake City and announced a threadbare, to threadbare and barely surviving people, states goods will soon sell in Salt Lake City for less than they sell for in New York. In the name of the Lord, amen. And as he returned to his seat from the pulpit, he said he, he said he had missed it this time. Someone on the stand said, I don't believe a word of it. And Brigham Young said, let it stand. It did stand. When the California gold rush came, the property was actually and completely, the prophecy was completely, actually and completely fulfilled, if I could read. Elder Kimball was right the first time, and he went from faith to doubt. It is an honest prayer to say, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. And it was, after all, a prophet of God, Joseph Smith, who said, and he was a man of faith, if I had not experienced what I have, I could not have, I, <clears throat> if I had not experienced what I have, I could not have believed it myself. That's kind of comforting to know that doubt and faith can go hand in hand, not at the same time, but seconds apart, and prophets do it too. Okay, general conference goals. I didn't read the book last night because I was reading the lesson over, and I was like, okay, teaching the lesson on Sunday, I have zero, absolutely zero, <laughs> zero. I have ideas and thoughts and this and that, but nothing cohesive or coherent. And so I was like, well, what if I just take the lesson plan that I bought from Etsy and I just do that straightforward. I just read the lesson plan and just, that's what we're going with. So I'm reading the lesson plan, right? And I'm like, this is literally garbage. Okay, not literally garbage because somebody worked semi-hard on it. I don't know. It just, it feels so trite and so surface level and just, so I don't know. I'm going to take some time today and figure out what the heck I'm doing. Goodness gracious. But anyways, that's why I didn't read the book last night. I was trying to go over the lesson, and we'll see how that goes. All right, but let's end it with a read it, do it. Alma chapter 28, they highlight verse 14. In a time when the devil was ensnaring the hearts of men, there was a great call of diligence to labor in the vineyard to battle for those very hearts. The same is true today. Heed the call. All right. That was Alma chapter 28, and tomorrow we do 29. We will see you then. Hopefully by then I have a lesson. We will see. Otherwise, I just get up and then I'm like... All right, lesson plan. <laughs> It'll be fine. All right, have a great Saturday.